Hey cats, Ed Budd here, back with another episode of the Big Three. So comparing three shoes for you today, all in a similar price range, and in fact quite similar tech. First of those shoes is the Hoka Oneone Rocket X, the old faithful running shoes. The Zoom Fly 3 that just never seems to go away. And the brand new Puma DV8 Nitro. Plate equipped rockets abound. A few stats for you first, because they're important. We got 301 grams or 10.6 ounces for the Puma DV8 Nitro in my UK size 11. Coming in at 313 grams or 11 ounces is the Nike Zoom Fly 3. Once again in a UK 11 US 12. I always have to size up a half in Hoka shoes and that's no exception in the Rocket X. This one weighs in at 248 grams or 8.7 ounces. So the lightest of all three by some margin. Heel to toe drops are 5mm in the Hoka and 8mm a piece in the Puma and the Nike. We've got to talk cash. And it's about 140 Earth credits for all three of these shoes. That doesn't happen very often. In terms of underfoot surface area, both the Puma and the Nike have about 11.5 centimeters in the widest point, with the Puma being marginally wider in the heel than the Nike, but a centimeter. In the forefoot, the Hoka is the narrowest with 11 centimeters, and somewhere in the middle of the Nike and the Puma with 8.4 centimeters in the heel. Uppers first. So vapor weave here in the Zoom Fly 3, and with lots of extra layers of upper as well. I didn't really find it my bag. It didn't really feel anything like vapor weave. It felt like a bit of a misuse of it, in fact. This felt a little bit more like a laptop case to me, a neoprene nightmare. That wasn't that bad. Um, just very warm. I found the shoe quite a warm shoe. I felt like I was having to cinch the laces up quite a lot, and I think it ran a little long, if I recall. Rocket X fit was Hmm, lots of extra upper hanging around, a bit like a freeloader. Especially on the sides of my foot, it felt like I was having to pull the upper. It almost met in the middle somewhere, as you can see. Certainly the thinnest and most minimal of all the uppers on the shoes today. And of course you've got some insanely long laces, which is a bit of a standard at the moment with Hoka shoes. The Puma's got a mesh type material, which has a lovely conforming sort of fit to my foot. Once it's settled down a bit, I found I got a good lockdown in this one. It's got enough structure there that it doesn't feel as if it's sort of flapping around on my foot. The Rocket X upper was just a little bit too flexible for me, considering the rigidity of the midsole. As such, in terms of points distribution for upper, I'm gonna give one to the Zoom Fly 3, two points to the Hoka Rocket X, and three points to the Puma DV8 Nitro. Just a quick message guys, you can help support the channel by purchasing some merchandise. The links are down below. And also if it's your first time here, make sure you hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications when I launch those new videos. Midsole now. So midsole wise, a really big range here. React in the Zoom Fly 3, which I found a little bit too dense. It seemed to nullify the properties of the carbon plate a little bit. Sometimes it felt like there wasn't even a carbon plate there. This one's become a firm favorite with lots of runners out there though. Remember, I'm just one man. People like it for longer, faster efforts. And you gotta say it's got the longevity. It's been out for ages now. It's a good 18 months or so, maybe more. No, it's about 18 months. A snappier, slightly more airy feel to the foam in the Rocket X. That side is still a rigid old shoe. <sighs> Probably the most ideal for faster paced running of all of the shoes here. These aren't the shoes for easy days. I'd say the Nitro Foam in the Puma shoe is probably the greatest in terms of energy return. It really is a very high rebound material. It's got some significant bounce there and it seems to return to its shape a little bit faster than some of the others. On those interval sessions that I like doing each week, certainly the Puma returns some of the best results. And I think for me, in terms of that sort of rebound feel, it's up there with Zoom X. Lovely stuff here that I'm keen to try out in some of the other shoes in the line. So one point to the React in the Zoom Fly 3. I think it's a good daily type midsole material, but it doesn't work for me with the carbon plate. Two points for the Hoka Rocket X, and three points to the foam in the midsole of the Puma DV8 Nitro. Outsole now. So you've got to say the Zoom Fly 3 outsole holds up really well over time. I'm not sure what they put into the rubber here, but it's tough. Good traction on most surfaces, though the rubber isn't perhaps as sticky as some of the stuff you find on the Puma shoe. That Puma grip stuff almost smells like a car tire probably is actually. Very impressive overall. 
and I'm keen to see what it's like in some of the other shoes. The Hoka's no slouch in terms of reasonable traction. I'm just a little bit worried about how quickly the rubber's gonna kind of smooth over. Already in the midfoot there, I'm starting to see a little bit of wear after about 60 or so miles, so a little bit worried about that. I've seen some of the rubber in other Hoka shoes and some of those exposed midsoles wear down very quickly. These are all much of a muchness, so I'm gonna have to use some type of tie breaker to separate them. So I use wet conditions as that tie breaker and the Rocket X holds up least well in wet conditions. So I'm gonna give that one point. I'll give two points for the Zoom Fly 3 in wet conditions. It's passable. Slick grip for a more civilized age. The Puma Deviate Nitro does perform well in the wet. I'll give that three points. Value now. That worked really well. So all three of these shoes come in at 140 Earth credits. So how do we decide a winner here? I think it's gotta be down to versatility and usability. So the Puma Deviate Nitro certainly is capable of those longer miles, the added foam, but also the added weight make this really a training option for me rather than a race option. Sadly, the same is to be said about the Zoomfly 3 being the heaviest of the bunch, although most shoes in my size just tend to be that little bit heavier. I don't know whether it's scaling of the materials or something, but it's always the case. Certainly wouldn't be one I'd use for a race this. Not with my skinny frame. I mean, if you're looking for a race shoe, the Hoka is certainly the lightest of the bunch. Very speedy, snappy, and it's rigid. It's gonna produce those results when you need it to, you know, when racing comes back. I think I found the Zoom Fly 3 probably the least versatile of all of the shoes on today's comparison. So I'm gonna give that one point today. Coming in in the middle, the Puma Deviate Nitro with two points. And I'm actually gonna give the Hoka the three points this time around. I think you could probably get the most out of this shoe. A little lighter, you could use it for some tempo work. You could use it for a long run. So slightly more versatile than the other two. So as long as I've not made some foolish calculation error, here are the final scores. I really do think Puma are onto something with this new Nitro foam. Really has some super properties. Everybody's looking for that cushion, that response, the rebound. And they certainly leave the legs feeling good. Let me know what you think of the big three down in the comments. Time for a quick musical interlude for you. Today I have one of those tracks that you'll hear and it'll stick in your mind for ages. It's by Bo Hannon and it's called the Disco Stomp. So if you're not aware of this track, I first heard about it listening to an interview with Johnny Marr. He was talking about this track he was obsessed with. When he was younger, he used to listen to it over and over again. I can see why. I just have to listen to it once, that's it. It's there for weeks. It's this really infectious sort of disco groove, really nice guitar in there, just kind of concentrating on one chord. It's all about the rhythm. Kind of like a Bo Diddley track. It's certainly funky. There's lots of funk in there. Really crisp production as well. Sounds like it could have been made yesterday. It really is that good. Probably not one for running. This is just one for enjoying yourself around the house. As the track progresses, they up the key a little bit each time to sort of create this crescendo at the end. There's some really nice brass and string parts come in a little bit later on. It's got that luscious sort of disco production. So definitely one for a fun Friday. Bo Hannon, the disco stomp. Okay, that's just about all for me for today, guys. Thanks for tuning in. If you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications of when I launch those new videos. And it really helps the channel out if you give this video a thumbs up, like, and share this video with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.